Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to AJ 108 Criminal Investigation Online. My name is Tony Farrar, and of course, I am your instructor for this semester. Today's lecture is going to cover the syllabus review, and when we are done with that, we will take a few minutes and we'll jump into the actual course canvas shell so you can learn where things are at. And, and sometimes, you know, while we're talking about things, it's a lot easier when you see them. So we'll spend a little bit of time navigating through the course canvas shell. So with that being said, we have a lot to cover. Let's go ahead and jump right into our syllabus review lecture. So again, this is AJ 108 Criminal Investigation. The section number is 3127. And of course, we are in the spring 2021 semester. I have my instructor information here with my email and my Twitter account information. I also included some information on the MSJC Criminal Justice Club Facebook. So if you're interested in getting involved with that group, you can take a look there. And I also have a link to the college uh, career education website. Should you want to know any more information about career ed or if you want to make a counseling appointment with one of the career ed counselors. Now, typically I am working out of the Menifee campus. I work in the 3000 building. My office is 3003 and I do have office hours on campus Tuesday and Thursday. However, since we are totally online this semester, I will hold office hours on Wednesday evenings from 6 to 7 p.m. And as we get a little further in the semester, I will send out a Zoom link to everybody and just hang on to that link because that'll be uh, the mechanism in which you can get into my uh, meeting room and, and, and participate in those office hours again on Wednesdays from 6 to 7 p.m. Now, these aren't mandatory meetings. I'm just there to help you should you have any questions. Along with that, I am also available at other times by appointment. So if you uh, want to talk to me one on one, we can do it either by phone or we can do it by Zoom. If you email me, I can set that appointment up and we can go ahead and deal with whatever it is that you have going on. Now, if you do email me, please uh, format your email as follows. AJ 108 3127 criminal investigation and your name in the subject line of the email. And I have an example here for you. And the reason for this is because of the fact that I teach several courses, this really is the best and most efficient way to make sure that I know who you are and what class you're in. Uh, with that, also make sure that all your emails come from your MSJC email account. Please do not use your personal or work email. Now, if you are requested to submit a written assignment in Canvas and the answer to that is yes this semester in this course, you will please do me a favor and submit this in Microsoft Word or you can uh, reformat that Microsoft Word into a PDF format or document. Now, if you send me a document in another word processing format like pages or keys or WordPerfect, there, um, or even if you send it through a third party provider like Google Docs, there's no guarantee that I'm going to be able to open it. And if I can't open it, I can't read it. If I can't read it, I can't grade it. If I can't grade it, I can't give you credit or points for it. So please make sure that you upload the assignment directly into Canvas and don't go through Google Docs in order to, um, because the system won't let me open it. Or again, make sure that you have it formatted in a PDF or uh, Microsoft Word. Okay, also, um, if you do not know how to set up your email, please contact the college help desk because as you're going to find out, that's going to be a very integral part of us communicating back and forth, making sure that you receive any emails or email announcements regarding the class. Okay, so now we're at the bottom of the page. We're right here if you're following along. So we'll talk a little bit about the syllabus. This is a a living document, meaning that it's subject to change during the semester. I typically don't make a lot of changes, but sometimes I might. And if I do make a change, everyone will be made aware of these changes when they occur in the form of an email 
or an announcement via Canvas. Thus, another reason to make sure that you set up your email account and you also set up whatever electronic device you're using to receive email announcements um, or text messages or however you want to set that up. But you just want to make sure that you're getting the information that I'm sending out. Um, along with that, if you have any questions about the class as we're going along, please email me direct or you can post questions questions in the general discussion board. And when we jump into the course canvas at the end of the lecture, I will show you where that is. Now, all assignments and due dates are listed in this syllabus. Therefore, it is your responsibility to read that information and follow the information. And really what I'm talking about is keeping track of due dates for assignments, etc. And while I will help by sending out reminders, please note, please note that again, it's not my responsibility to continually remind you of due dates or tests or quizzes or your term paper or your case study, etc. Because all of this information is contained within the syllabus. We're talking about it now in the video lecture and it's also inside of your course canvas. So please make sure that you uh, really keep an eye on those due dates. And in your course canvas, there's a very convenient calendar and it shows when all the assignments are due. So what is this course that you've gotten yourself into, right? Well, we're going to have a great time, but this, this course, Criminal Investigation, is very broad. There's a lot of content. And this course addresses the techniques and procedures and even the ethical issues in the investigation of both crime and the recovery of evidence. So we have two pieces there. We're going to focus on the organization of the investigative process, meaning is there a certain way that you should do certain things as you work these different crime scenes? And the short answer is yes, there is. We're going to talk about crime scene searches, interview and interrogation techniques, how to do surveillance, uh, sources of information. How do we track suspects down and where do we get this info from? We'll talk about suspect identification, scientific analysis, whether it's polygraphs or DNA. And then we're also going to kind of talk about the role of the investigator as it relates to the trial process. Because once everything else is done, that case still has to go to trial. And that, that presents other issues. And, and we'll, we'll talk more about that. So a lot of content, a lot of things to cover. Okay, so next up we have the department's program learning outcomes. And I'll, I'll let you look at these at your leisure. We have the course learning outcomes. These are what we hope you walk away with. And then we have the course learning objectives, some important things that we're going to talk about and go over throughout this semester as we go through each one of the chapters. Um, next up, we have the textbook. So the title is Criminal Investigation. It's the 11th edition. It's a Pearson publishing book. Um, and you can see there's the ISBN number. Now, I want to give you the 30 second pitch like I do in several of my courses for the textbook. So remember, we talked about what the course content was. And we know that there's a lot of information, a lot of content. As a matter of fact, there's so much information to cover that it's very, very difficult for me to put everything in one chapter into one lecture because you really don't want to hear me talk for like five hours trying to cover everything in there. So with that said, getting the textbook will allow you to uh, study the key terms, learn about the different processes as it relates to crime scene investigation, but it will also help you add context to a lot of the different things that we're going to talk about. Some of those things I may not be able to get to in each weekly lecture. So having the textbook, whether it's the hard copy or an ebook, I think is really important for you to be successful. So there's my my 30 second pitch for the textbook. Now, you can get this book online at uh, one of the MSJC bookstores, or I'm sure that all of you 
know where you can or have a favorite place where you get your textbooks, whether it's Amazon or Chegg or whether you buy them or rent them, etc. Or whether you get the e-version. So it really doesn't matter whatever's more comfortable for you. But I highly suggest in this particular course that you pick up the textbook. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the penal code. This is not the primary textbook, but we are going to refer to it from time to time because we're going to be talking a lot about crimes in California. And the California Penal Code has all of the laws and the crimes, et cetera, in there. So we're going to reference that. Now, if you have one, great. If you don't have one, that's okay because you can now access all of that information online. And in order to help out, I have posted a a uh, link to a website called legalinfo.gov and this is where you will find all California code so you can go there and there's really no need to pick up a penal code okay so this next part is extremely important actually the entire syllabus is very important but this is the course check-in and this is very very important so if you're following along this might be a great time to to listen very closely so typically the way that my courses are broken down is they're separated by weeks in what I call modules or units. So each week is a module. So week one would be like module one, et cetera, right? Every module opens on a Monday at eight in the morning and it closes the following Sunday. So you have like a little over six days to get your assignments done inside that weekly module. Now, the only difference this semester is that the first Monday of the semester is actually a holiday. So only just for week one, which is going to be the orientation week, course, the course is going to open on Tuesday instead of Monday because Monday is a holiday. So the module, the orientation module is going to open on Tuesday the 19th at 8 in the morning. And you will have basically until Sunday, January 24th at 11 p.m. to check into the class. There's two things that you need to do in order to check in. First, do the check-in discussion board. This is your actual official check-in for the class. But also as part of the check-in procedure, part two, is that you'll need to complete a very short 10-question syllabus quiz. So again, the course opens on the 19th at 8 a.m. It closes on the 24th at 11 p.m. And this during this week one, this is the orientation week. All right. Failure to complete both pieces, both parts of that check-in process will result in you being dropped from the class. And I say that not to be mean, but typically there's a wait list for this course and because of that, I'm going to have to go down to the course wait list and take the next student up on the list. So that's why I'm kind of telling you, make sure that you get checked into the course. It's very, very important. Okay, so enough of that. Let's talk a little bit now about some of the course guidelines and a few, <clears throat> excuse me, of the expectations. So this is a somewhat fast paced class. Remember I told you there's a lot of reading and a lot of information that's going to be provided to you weekly. And because of that, you really need to keep up on the readings. Don't just rely on the PowerPoint lectures to get you through the class. And, and some of the legal terms at first may be difficult for you to understand because you, maybe you've never heard them before. So really, again, another pitch for the textbook here, you're going to need to read the chapters in the textbook carefully and thoroughly to fully understand some of the things that we're talking about. And also to add some context to the subject matter, to be able to apply it. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, in some cases, you might have to look up a word or a term on the internet, the penal code or a law dictionary. And I'll give you links to those areas so you don't have to go searching around. But again, if you have a problem with any type of concept or procedure or anything else, please let me know. 
and I will discuss it in Canvas in that general discussion board area. So this is not a, an easy class. It's going to require a lot of work on your part in order to do well. And I really hope that's your goal, not just to take the class, but to learn and to do well. However, this class will be very rewarding from the knowledge and the information that you're going to gain regarding criminal investigations. And again, there's a lot of information here. So with that, let's talk a little bit about some course expectations. So my expectations are going to be that you will participate in a variety of activities that will achieve those learning objectives that we looked at earlier in the syllabus. And that'll include, let's, let's take a look at them. Number one, reading the required materials. So reviewing the PowerPoints, the lecture notes, the articles, and yes, reading the, the, the textbook chapters. Number two, viewing the weekly videos that relate or correspond to each chapter. Uh, watching or reviewing the, the video lectures like I'm doing right now, or any of the introductory videos or the case study videos, etc. Number three, participating in what I call thoughtful and timely discussions via the discussion board. And we'll talk more about discussions in just a minute. Number four, completing the online matching exercise assessment. Now, I have one of these assessments in every chapter. And really, it's to help you learn the key terms or the definitions. It's a non-graded assignment. So you can take it as many times as you want. And on one side, you'll see the key term. And on the other side, you'll see a definition. And your job is to match them up. And this will help you learn a lot of those key terms, which will help you in your quizzes, which happens to be number five, completing online and timed quizzes. Number six, completing online and timed exams. Number seven, completing the case study. And finally, number eight, completing the midterm writing assignment. Now, please note, and we're here at the bottom of the page, failure to participate in discussion boards, missing quizzes or exams, failing to turn in any other assignments or missing a combination of these activities may cause you to be dropped from the class. Now, I'm not talking about one week you, f you didn't do a discussion board or another week you didn't do a quiz. I'm talking about if you fall off the face of the earth for like three weeks and you've done zero assignments, more than likely you're going to be dropped from the class. Now, with that being said, if there's some type of issue, please communicate that with me directly so I can help you. My job is to make you successful and of course, make it through this course with a good grade. So communicate with me and, 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 and I will do everything I can to help you get through the course. Okay, so let's move on a little bit. Um, this class is what we call a asynchronous meeting, which means that you do your assignments between a time frame. So when we talk about the weekly modules, again, it opens one day and closes another. And between that date frame, basically, you work on your own and you complete the assignments. Every once in a while, a couple of times during the semester, we might have an opportunity to do a synchronous meeting, which means that we're all on at the same time on the same day via Zoom. And these meetings, if we do them, will be announced well in advance to give you plenty of time to make sure that you can be there. And they're not mandatory, but they are good opportunities for everyone to, you know, see each other face to face and exchange information or ask questions um, or cover other major topics or attend a guest speaker. Because sometimes I might have a homicide detective that might do an hour lecture on what they do. And you're going to want to see that, but that'll be a synchronous meeting, which means you're going to have to log in at a certain time. Okay. So how do you know then that you're ready for all of this online stuff? I know there's a lot of things I'm throwing at you right now. Well, you've already heard about, we've talked about the course expectations, but you really need to make sure that you understand what is expected of an online student. So I've given you a couple of places to go. First is a link 
to the MSJC online learning page where they have a lot of good information on helping you self-assess. And along with that, the next link right here would be to several video tutorials and other related information that tell you how to navigate through your course canvas or upload an assignment or set up your email. So these are just a couple of helpful links. Now in your actual course canvas, as you go through the orientation process, you will see a lot, I mean a lot of good, helpful resources. Uh, and, and I'll show you where that stuff is when we finish with this uh, lecture regarding the syllabus. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about Canvas now and about technology. So first of all, you are responsible for your computer equipment and your internet connection independent of the college. And what I'm really trying to say here is that you need to have a plan. You have to plan your coursework and be able to accommodate some type of computer issue or other problem on your end. And, and just because there's a problem on your end doesn't necessarily mean that that, that that issue will be grounds for relaxing some of the deadlines or changing the deadlines. Because remember, you get about six days to do the assignments within the modules. So plan your coursework and have a backup plan. Now that doesn't mean that I'll never you know, accept somebody's issue. That's not what I'm trying to say. But just in a general sense, I'm asking you to have a backup plan. Okay. Um, now, on the other hand, if the college uh, canvas goes down and you can't access anything, of course, I'm going to change due dates and we'll work around all of those other issues as well. So speaking of canvas, let's take a look at some of the more some of the functions of Canvas that are typically used a little bit more than others. So first of all, when we talk about Canvas, for you to really be successful, I need you to check your Canvas a couple of times per week. That means like two, at minimum two. Take the time during the orientation week to navigate around through the course Canvas so you can remember where things are at and you know where the different modules are at. So try to familiarize yourself with what the layout of the course looks like. Next would be modules. And this is important because this is where your weekly assignments are. So I'm gonna title each, each module, I'll title it. So you'll know exactly what week the module is for. So an example would be module one will be titled unit one or week one. And therefore, unit one or week one will contain all of the assignments needed to complete you, that you have to do in week one. Does that kind of make sense? Um, and all these modules, they'll have things inside of them, like the audio lectures, the PowerPoints, the you know links to videos and articles, all of your exams, your quizzes, and other information will all be inside of those weekly modules. And the reason to put everything in these weekly modules is to make it more convenient for you so you don't have to go looking around for all of your assignments. They're all basically in that module in one place with a couple of exceptions. And I will show you those exceptions in just a couple of minutes. Next would be discussions. And this is important because this is where our group discussions are going to occur on various topics. Now remember, I'll also have a discussion board for general questions as well. And in these discussion areas, I may also add in a video or an article or something for you to read before you actually respond to your discussion post. So make sure as you go through the discussions that you read the information uh, relative to the topic for each discussion so you can respond appropriately. Um, announcements, this is important because this is where you're going to find your announcements uh, for the class, including any information on changes to exams or quizzes or any other information that I might want you to know about. Maybe there's a, a job fair coming up or maybe there's, again, a guest speaker or I saw this really cool article and I want you to read it because we're going we're gonna to talk about it one day or something. So. Again, make sure that you set up those electronic devices to receive uh, emails, text messages, and announcements via Canvas. Next would be the gradebook. 
And this is important because that's where your grades are. And then finally, extra credit. And this is important because this is where you can find some of the extra credit assignments. And, you know, also keep in mind that sometimes these extra credit assignments are date specific. So make sure you read the assignment and take note of the dates involved. Now, I have one extra credit assignment already built into the class. And as we go through the semester, I will throw in or add other extra credit assignments. Okay, so don't go searching for them on your own. I will let you know when there's an extra credit assignment that's coming up, but there is one already built into um, our syllabus. Okay, so how are we gonna learn all this? That was a whole lot of stuff. Well, we have the lectures, the news articles, the visual aids, videos, PowerPoints, our class discussions, written assignments, quizzes, and exams. And then again, don't forget that you're always welcome to attend any of the in-class presentations from any of the guest speakers, and I will let you know in advance of any of those dates. Um, and remember, they're not on campus. They're going to be online as well. If you do need some type of academic support, um, it can either be through me um, or you can uh, go to the LRC, so that, you know, the MSJC Learning Resource Center um, or the help desk which is now virtual. Um, and when you go through the course orientation for week one, as you look in that module, again, you'll see a lot of information uh, for support. So if you need any help at all, uh, there's a lot of avenues uh, for you to take on, on getting whatever help you need. Now, really quick, before I forget, we also have our uh, student AJ Tudor, uh, Rita, returning for this semester. And inside of your course canvas, I have a module for your midterm paper. And at the bottom of that module is going to be a page of information on how to contact Rita and schedule an appointment should you need any type of assistance on writing your case study um, or your uh, midterm paper or even study habits for that matter. So again, check your canvas at least twice a week for you know announcements or changes, et cetera. Please note that it is your responsibility to monitor your email for any assignment changes. All right, student code of conduct. So the code of conduct itself is available online in the MSJC catalog. Uh, but what I wanna kind of take a minute to talk about would be just making sure that we are professional, and that we watch our language, et cetera, uh, when we are using discussion boards or having discussions. Now, there's something out there called netiquette. It's basically the, you know, etiquette of cyberspace. In other words, it's a set of rules for how to properly behave online. There's an author out there by the name of Virginia Shea. She's defined a lot of the issues um, as it relates to online etiquette and discuss them at length in her book called Netiquette. I've also included here a link to a portion of her book. It's basically some of her core rules of Netiquette. It's not gonna answer all of your questions, but it might provide you with some basic principles, et cetera. But really the reason I'm putting this in here is just to make sure everybody understands that we, we will discuss a lot of different topics and some of them might seem controversial. As a matter of fact, they're going to be. And, you know, dis discussions are meant for everybody to learn. We want input from everybody so we can kind of think about it. And who knows, maybe you might change your mind about something. But if you don't, that's fine. I just want everybody to be uh, encouraging and professional. Now, that doesn't mean you can't disagree with a discussion post because certainly you can, but there's a way to disagree and, and there's a way to agree, et cetera. So enough about that. All right, I've included a couple of websites here. Should you need them, the first one is basically the main uh, website for Cornell Law School. And then I also have the website to the US Supreme Court. So these are a couple of important ones. And then in your course canvas, I have several other websites that you can use uh, should you need to do some research, et cetera. Okay, so let's move on now to exams and quizzes. So the quiz and exam questions are going to come directly from the textbook. 
uh, the lecture, the PowerPoints, the audio, video lecture, uh, or designated articles or videos that I post. So each week you're going to have a reading assignment, a, a video lecture, kind of like what I'm doing right now, uh, the PowerPoint, a short 10 question quiz covering the, the corresponding chapter that we are in, and either a discussion topic or a discussion question. Sometimes I make them more of a question, sometimes they're more of a topic. Now, overall throughout the, the semester, in addition, there's going to be three chapter exams, a midterm writing assignment, and a case study. And then of course, remember in each weekly module, there is that key terms uh, matching exercise that's non-graded and you can take that as many times as you want. Discussion boards, remember discussion boards are typically reflective in nature. Therefore, they're meant to make you think about a certain subject, perhaps even think about it so much that you might be motivated to research it a little bit, uh, to consider other perspectives based on what you find, and then to provide a response. Now, you're going to have a total of 14 chapter discussion boards and one course check-in, so a total of 15 all together, okay? Each discussion board is worth up to 10 points. Now, when responding to discussion boards, make sure that you read all of the information or watch the corresponding video to help add some context before you decide to respond, okay? And when you do respond, respond with a complete, well thought out response. If you want full point credit for your response, meaning you want all of those 10 points, your post, your initial post must be at least five sentences in length. If it's shorter, you're not going to get full credit. Also, do not simply copy the response from another person. The more focused and thought out your response, the more points you're going to get. Make sense? And also, don't just respond with, hey, professor, I agree or similar. Tell me what you think about the issue, the question, etc. Now, feel free to respond or comment on another student's post because this is how we get the discussion going. And in this framework, you can say, hey, I agree with you, but or I disagree with you because. All right, you can do that. But remember, your initial po post needs to be five sentences in length. OK, so I'm not going to go through each one of the assignments here. This is the case study. This is also located in your course canvas. So your short case study is going to be the Golden State Killer case. And I even tell you some of the questions I want you to answer. Here are some kind of the information directions, if you will, on how to do the case study. Your extra credit assignment that's built in to, to this semester. Now, again, remember, there's going to be some other ones, but this one is already built in. This is the, the Sam Shepard murder case. And I also tell you some of the questions that I want you to answer. And down below tells you how you can submit this assignment. Okay, so this uh, extra credit assignment, just so you know, is a total of 15 points. But again, there will be opportunities for other assignments. But don't, don't depend on that. Please, please, please do your best to complete every weekly assignment, okay? That way you won't fall behind. Okay, so again, as we finish up and then we start looking at uh, grades, remember this course follows a weekly format. So therefore, all of the stuff you need, the PowerPoints, the quizzes, exams, discussion boards, videos, etc., are gonna be in those weekly modules posted and available on Mondays except for week one at 8 a.m. And then your weekly assignments are due by 11 p.m. on the following Sunday night. So again, just to kind of finish it off one more time, week one, it would normally be Monday, but it's a holiday. So it's going to open on Tuesday the 19th at 8 because Monday is a holiday. And then you're going to have until the following Sunday 
at 11 p.m. to get everything done in that weekly module. And this weekly module is the orientation module. And I will show you what it looks like. Now, with that said, as a general rule, there are no makeup assignments. The reason being is you have six days basically to complete each of the weekly assignments. Therefore, it's really up to you to get the work done. Now, I know stuff happens. So that stuff, which I like to refer to as emergencies, will be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. And, and some examples could be jury duty, military deployment, um, medical emergency, etc. Okay, again, keep in mind that it's your responsibility to make time for completing the assignments. One of the best ways to do it is set time aside during the week, not on the last day, during the week, okay, uh, to get your assignments done. So don't wait until the last minute. And while, again, I will do the best I can to remind you of due dates and other information, ultimately, it's going to be your responsibility and plan accordingly. So here's a couple of quick hints. There are basically three issues that I see with online students who experience problems. The first is the inability to keep track of your due dates. Now, again, as I told you before, there's a calendar inside of your course canvas. So there's no reason that you should lose track of assignments. All right, but do whatever you need to do to keep track. You need to be able to self-pace, self-regulate, keeping track of those due dates and don't wait until the last half an hour to do all of your assignments because it's going to show. Next, thinking that because there are, you know, there's so many little quizzes or so many discussion boards that if I miss a few, it really doesn't matter. Well, the reality is it, it does matter because missing assignments it tends to add up quickly and really before you know it you're behind and then finally set up your electronic device or devices to receive notifications or important announcements that I send out that's really important all right so now let's talk about grades and then we'll look at the schedule and then we'll jump into the canvas real quick so I have one little note here there are certain weeks, only a couple of them, where you're going to have a weekly chapter exam along with a larger exam. So you'll have your little weekly quiz, and then you'll also have your, your larger chapter exam, if you will. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. A little hint, uh, do the weekly quiz first before you jump into the chapter exam. Um, and and again, I'll give you a visual on what that looks like. All right, so here's the grading scale. Pretty self-explanatory. Here are the assignments. You have three chapter exams. These are the larger exams that I talked to you about. The third one is the final. You have your discussion boards, your weekly, your check-in, your syllabus quiz check-in, your midterm paper, your chapter quizzes, your case study for a total of 530. And again, already built in is a 15 point extra credit assignment, uh, but there'll be more as we progress through the semester. A couple of important dates for you to know, and I'll let you look at these at your leisure. Should you need any assistance in any way, okay, please contact me or uh, DSPS and we will make sure that we get done whatever you need uh, to help you to accommodate you to make sure that you are successful in this course because that is our job to do that. Okay, so talking about the midterm paper, this same information is within your course canvas. Uh, I put it on the syllabus just so you can see it. This is the case study that you're going to write about. I give you some of the questions. Here are some of the directions on how to do that. Also keep in mind that I'm going to post on Canvas an instructional video on how to complete your paper in the APA writing style. It's gonna cover formatting, your cover page, 
uh, your abstract and your reference page, along with step-by-step -step instructions on how to cite. So don't panic. There's a video lecture and a PowerPoint on that, and we'll walk through that, and I'll, I'll send out more information. And we can even cover that on either a synchronous meeting or during office hours, okay? So with that being said, and it looks like this ran together right here, and I'll space that back out later, but when we talk about plagiarism, Remember, and everybody knows what that word means, but you know, when you use information from a text, an article, a news story, or a paper without acknowledging or citing the source, giving credit to the source, or using quotes, that is plagiarism. All right. And it doesn't mean that you can't use the info that you find, you just have to cite your references. And that's really, really important. So kind of the best rule of thumb, if you didn't think of it yourself or it's not common knowledge, you need to cite it. And if you're not sure, cite it anyway. And that'll just kind of cover you. And there's a couple of other bullet points that you can look at. Okay, so here's what the weeks look like. All right, so let's look at week one. Now remember, Monday's the 18th, so really it's gonna open on the 19th. This is the check-in the orientation so from the 19th to the 24th this is what you're going to do week two is unit one it opens on a monday it closes on a sunday we're going to go over chapter one you can see here you have the matching exercise the quiz and the discussion board you go down you know and they're very consistent and they're consistent to help you remember but now let's go down to week six all right, so you can see week six, we're going to cover chapter five, and there's the video lecture. You still have the chapter five assessment. You have the quiz, but now look, you have the chapter exam that covers chapters one through five. Do the quiz first. Remember I told you to do that because it's going to help you study for that. Does that kind of make sense? So it looks very similar all the way through, and it's for consistency. All right. So now let's take a moment and let's jump into the course canvas. And I'm going to slide this over so you can see. On the left, we have the navigation panel and yours will look a little bit different because right now we are in instructor view. But this is the home page. When you log in, this is where you should be. It's going to talk about the course, a little short video, the description of the class, the learning objectives, some information from me, the fact I went to Cambridge, and a little video on how to navigate Canvas. To start the class, you can go right to modules or you can just click start here. And it's going to take you to, remember I told you, the orientation. And there's a little orientation video. And I'm going to slide this over here so you can see the whole thing. And I've got a little letter here and some information. And then down in the bottom right, you'll see this little next button. Okay. If you click that next button after you're done reading this, you go to the next page. And there's information about me. And then you click it again. And this is how you walk through the orientation. You're still in the orientation, but you're going to start to see a lot of information that's helpful. Getting started. Uh, the beginning, you know, to begin the orientation, some of the required materials, a couple of videos, um, some other software information should you need it. And, and if you need anything, I'll let you know. Um, the quest for online success. So here's a Canvas student guide. Okay. Uh, getting your questions answered, office hours, late assignments, information about the library time expectations, how much time you should actually be spending on your coursework, study skills, note taking, etc. These are all tips for you. All right. How to, you know, little some research tips. And then don't forget, we have Rita, our AJ tutor that's available. A little more information on netiquette. OK, how to set up your profile and your settings. And here are some very cool, helpful Canvas guides. This is the orientation, you guys. 
Then you come to the course syllabus page. Now I haven't posted the syllabus or this video yet, but I will. So when you open this, you'll see the video uh, probably over in here and you'll see a PDF version of the syllabus. And yes, this is me wearing my in the syllabus shirt because yes, everything you need to know is in fact in the syllabus. Next is the discussion board. It's built into the module, into the week one orientation module. You don't have to click all over the place looking for it, which makes it actually nice. Then there's the syllabus quiz. Okay, then we have a lot of other support services should you need those. And then finally, you're done. That's week one. Okay, the important part for week one is getting checked in. All right, remember that. Now you can also look at this in a module view. And because I have other modules built in here for you. So the module view looks like this. This is, if you click here, it's the home page. This was the orientation module that we just went through. So you can see the syllabus quiz, that's all there. I have a module here on how to use Zoom. Here's information on the Criminal Justice Club. Here's some cool investigative websites. Um, if you wanna know about the Bill of Rights, okay, which I think you really should, you can click on here just to show you. It talks a little bit about it and you can learn about all the amendments. Are they important to criminal investigation? Well, absolutely they are because there are several that you're going to learn about that are going to set guidelines on what you can and what you can't do. Same with the court systems. There's some videos there. This module is just for your midterm writing assignment. It's got a video lecture, the PowerPoint. This is your actual assignment, how to upload your paper and information on our AJ tutor. This is your case study module. This is your extra credit module. This is your other extra credit module, which means as I send out other extra credit opportunities, you'll get it in an assignment, but this is where you will upload it, okay? And now I wanna finish up showing you what the next module. So we did the orientation, but here's week two, unit one. So this is chapter one. Here's what it's gonna look like. You're gonna have an overview, okay? So you're gonna go through and you're gonna read this. And then you're gonna go to the introduction and there might be a video. It's going to tell you kind of what's going on and then some additional resources. You know, watch the history of forensic science. Just to get your brain moving. Here's the chapter. This is the lecture PowerPoint. So you're going through this, this one, this, you know, module. Here's the actual video lecture. And here there are two parts. Here's the matching exercise that I spoke of. Here's the chapter quiz. Now, make sure you read the directions for your chapter quizzes, not your discussion or not your chapter exams, but for your quizzes, you get two attempts, okay? So don't panic. So if you don't do that great on the first one, take it again. And then you have your discussion question. And remember, a lot of times there might be a video built in, so here, you're going to want to, here's the question. This is going to be a kind of a myth or fact question. And you're going to watch this video and then you're going to respond. And then when you're done, you'll see you made it through the unit summary. Now that's pretty simple, right? Everything built into these little modules. And then finally, just to show you uh, the donut shop, this is the general discussion area. Yeah, I know the donut shop, whatever. Uh, yeah, don't be a critic. Anyway, um, and cops do like donuts. And I'll explain that to you guys later on in the semester. But uh, you can post general questions here in the donut shop. And anybody, another student or myself, uh, will respond back to that. So so that's kind of a quick walkthrough. Um, so that will conclude our uh, video lecture on the syllabus review. Uh, again, if you have any, any issues or questions, please feel free to email me direct. Um, a lot of information will start to come out a couple of days before class actually starts. So monitor your, your email, etc. I look forward to having a great semester and I will talk to you all soon.